Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. And today what we're going to dive into is how to threat hunt for malicious user activity using the Windows event logs. So in previous weeks, we talked about other parts of the Windows event logs. Uh, today we're going to focus on malicious account activity. So let's hop right in. So why does account auditing matter? Um, many groups use different techniques. If you look at MITRE ATT&CK, right, you have account un unauthorized account activity um, ranging everything from attackers creating accounts to using valid accounts, um, using built-in accounts. Um, sometimes you'll see attackers um, you know, modify the accounts in different ways. We'll see later as we talk through the different event types um, how you can use different events to really find whatever the attacker is doing as it relates to the built-in account. Today we'll focus heavily on Windows accounts. Um, this does tie into both domain controller logs um, and local user logs um, in some of the Azure. So what you have here is even if it is a local account or even if it is a domain joined account, um, this technique and this approach is really important when you look at how a lot of attackers do both enumeration, lateral movement, and really move throughout their cyber operations. So next slide. So using event logs to detect the account of compromise. Um, this is another feature when you look at Microsoft's advanced security auditing policy. Um, and something to say in here also is that location does matter when we're digging into these logs, right? So we mentioned domain controllers. So if you're looking for attacker use of domain credentials, um, you're going to need to go to the domain controller, right? Um, and when you go to the domain controller, right, this will help you look at those accounts that are critical, right? Are they admin accounts? Are they service accounts? Are they database accounts? Are they accounts for a given use or for a given application, right? And when you begin correlating these accounts and you begin correlating the behaviors of how these accounts, you know, are typically interacted with what they're used to do, um, this is where it's very, very powerful, even when you're on a large domain, um, correlating this across. You know, other Windows servers, you can't just stop at the domain controller. So oftentimes you'll see attackers leverage local built-in accounts, right? Um, ones that a lot of people hear of are things like the guest account, right? Things like local admin. Um, a lot of times corporations and a lot of times places will only look at their Windows domain logs. And if they're not sometimes looking at that local admin or they don't have visibility into local accounts on a box, um, some attackers are going to take advantage of this blind spot, right? You also then have the uh, workstation logs, right? Um, these are the actual user endpoints. So other on other servers on the previous one on here, these other servers might be things like uh, IIS, right? If it's a Windows-based server, this might be your um, SQL database, um, and, but this could be really any application that uses built-in Microsoft accounts or uses Active Directory for authentication or service those. Again, on workstations, right, we talked a lot about local users, local uh, admins, all of that, basically accounts that aren't assigned to the domain, but that an attacker can still leverage at least to get on the box. And you know, they might use that local account to log into the machine itself. And you might say, well, you know, if they try to log into a domain resource, they're still going to need to work around that. Well, you know, with the right permissions or with the right privesk, an attacker might even be able to use that local account to um, perform whatever action they're trying to perform. These accounts, again, as we talked in previous weeks, and we'll see in, I think, in the next slide how to configure these, you can manage this advanced auditing of accounts both at the local level. Um, if you're doing it for a local policy for local accounts, you can also do this at the uh, group, at the GPO level, at the domain controller level for a policy that goes across your domain. Um, obviously, if you are on a more corporate network, you're going to want to do it by group policy so you have consistency across all of your boxes, but local is also an option and we'll show local there. If you want more info in the table you're going to see here has Microsoft's recommendations here um, for those different three types of computers, right? So domain controllers, other servers, and workstations. Uh, Microsoft actually breaks down their recommendations on what you should audit. 
uh, by those types. Um, if you look at the table here, go to the link, you can definitely read a lot more on Microsoft's thoughts on these. So again, enabling these, right? If you're enabling these on the local machine, right? Um, you're going to go to your local security policy here on the image on the left, we just searched for local um, and it pops right up when in the start menu when you search for it. Um, something that's important here on account behavior is unlike some of the other advanced auditing features, um, a lot of these log types are a little bit split up over features and even across folders. So we have the account management folder here um, open, but you might go down into like account login, right? The folder above, you might go into log on, log off. Um, as you configure these and as you set your policy, you need to make sure that you enable it, whether it be through GPO or through here, you need to make sure you enable the right field um, to have the event log show up. So all of these uh, advanced uh, user account auditing logs that we show, to get, show today, most of them are not enabled by default. These are ones you actually have to go in and enable. Um, so this is the way that you enable it on the local account. So when we actually talk about what falls under the um, account compromise under this advanced user account auditing, um, we have these events. And these events um, go ever, span everything from account creation to enabling accounts, changing passwords, disabling accounts, deleting them. So you have, as you can see, kind of a full life cycle of events from the account popping up to it changing to it you know, being locked out and disappearing, even unlocking too. Um, you have options too, like if an attacker goes in and one of the event logs that we'll dig in very deeply is when they go into change settings, right? So did they change my password reset frequency, right? Did they disable smart card or some other, you know, two-factor author uh, option in there, right? Um, you can see changes to accounts if you set up that proper auditing level um, to be ready to see whatever behavior you're trying to see. The behavior you want to see might be focused on a given adversary, on something you know um, from the past that they were doing, maybe through an Intel report. Um, or it might be based on, hey, what if this happened, right? What if, you know, as you're doing maybe a tabletop exercise, right? You know, how would I actually counteract, you know, scenario X in this tabletop exercise, right? And it might come through in this, logging to help you see what you need to see on, um, you know, with accounts with this. So again, um, a lot of different event IDs in here. We're only going to look at three or four, but what I wanted to do here was show kind of the full list of events um, in here, because again, you can get pretty granular. Other thing to note on here, you'll see the S and the F. If it just has an S, it means it's just logged on success. If it has an S and an F, it's logged on success and failure. Um, and if there's just an F, then it's only logged on failure. So it's important to know as you go through these events too, which events um, only log when it's successful versus events that you know will log the attempt, right? If it's logging the attempt, generally it's going to show both success and failure. But let's log into, or let's look at a very specific event ID now. We're going to look at 4720, right? Um, what this event ID is, is when an account's created, if you have the auditing enabled, um, you'll see this event log. Again, this is really handy, potentially on a domain controller or a local host, um, because you'll see when accounts are actually being created. Hopefully this is one you are pulling into a seam or you're monitoring elsewhere. Again, attackers can modify Windows event logs, so it's important sometimes to pull, pull these events off the box when you can, just so they aren't tampered with. But in this log type, what you have, you, you have the account name, you have the domain, the login ID, security type, display name. You even have things like the home directory, you have login scripts. Um, and you know when you go to the Microsoft page, we put the link at the bottom, they'll tell you what the default value is for these fields. On creation, a lot of times, you'll actually have the default values set to null or set to nothing. Um, and they actually say, hey, on some of these fields, if it's set to something, you know, that's a little suspicious, right? Um, so when you look at their recommended monitoring on this, things like the SAM account name, right? Some of the security identifiers in there. Um, things like, wait, that user already had a home directory, right? 
um, the password was last set and there's already a password last set date, right? Um, this is, again, Microsoft points it out as being suspicious because again, this is supposed to be a new account. And if you see kind of signs that the account already existed, that might be something you dig into. But really the most interesting one on here, to me at least, is primary group ID is not 513. So um, in Windows, right, there's numbers for each of the group IDs. The significance of 513 here is that's the group ID for um, domain and local user accounts. So if the user ID is not 513, then it could be a admin account or it's just some other weird type of account. So if we wanted to look for accounts being created that were admin accounts, we could bring in and say, okay, let me look for group ID not being 513 because that's not you know, a standard account being created in there, right? It could be a service account, could be an um, admin account for something else. So again, this is where metadata, even for an activity like account creation can be really, really important. So 4798, second one we'll look at. So this is um, when a group user, user group memberships enumerated, right? So if you have a tool like Bloodhound, if you have um, some of the other Active Directory enumeration tools, um, oftentimes you'll see tools like that, tools like Bloodhound, some of the other recon and enumeration tools, um, they'll enumerate what groups a user's in, right? Hey, is this user part of the you know, web admins group? Is this user part of local admins? It, what groups is this user part of? Um, with this log, what you get is you get the account name, you get the domain, the login ID, security ID, um, and really interesting to this one, you get the process name and path. So you know who's asking this question to you too. Um, again, recommended monitoring from Microsoft, right? You wanna look again for those security IDs that are admin accounts, right? Um, or actually that would be group. You wanna look for those security IDs that you know are tied to critical accounts, right? Hey, security ID for, you know, for built-in admin account, of, um, you know, security ID for an admin account. If an attacker is trying to attack an application or part of Windows, they could go after accounts with the security IDs that can actually reach the data they're trying to reach. <clears throat> we talked about process information so again, we have the process name and path here. So looking for processes, um, you know, with weird paths or paths outside of where they should be, um, or even process names that are tied to things like, I think the example Microsoft uses, they use one like cane.exe for cane enable, right? So look again for binaries that we know are tied to attacker enumeration, right? Um, if you have an attacker doing this with built-in tools, you might look for how the attacker generally names that tool, right? Or you might use that path and file name to say, okay, let me tag that file for further analysis and then run it through and see what it's actually doing, right? Um, again, this log can help you really dive down to when the groups that a given user is in is enumerated. It helps you kind of begin to, again, peel that onion and get to the different layers inside of it. So third one we'll look at today is event ID 4740. So this is what happens when an account's logged out, right? So if someone tries to brute force RDP, right? And they lock the account out. Um, if it's enabled, you'll have a 4730 for when that account was locked out. Um, interesting to this one, right? You have the account name, domain, security ID, login ID. Um, what's unique to this one is the caller computer name. Um, so good news and bad news on caller computer name. It's the actual name of the computer. And so if it's remote, it's not actually the IP address. It's actually the name of the computer um, short of the IP address. So it may be helpful. It may not be helpful. If this is internal, hopefully that computer name is actually helpful because you know how you name your computers or you have, hopefully you have an inventory or sheet of being able to say, okay, computer names, this one. But, you know, recommended monitoring here, right? Um, look for account logouts where the security ID is not system. So on your on a Windows machine, the actual um, user that should be the security ID that should be locking accounts, the only one actually is system. So if something else is locking accounts, if they found a way to do that, you're going to have event 4740 where the 
um, security IDs not actually associated with the system account. You obviously want to look at critical account logouts too. Again, if you're getting brute forced and they're looking for administrator or common um, admins, usernames that they know you use, this is going to be one you want to watch. You also want to watch your service accounts and really any account that you deem as quote unquote high risk to go against that. Um, suspicious account lockouts from unusual caller computers, right? So again, we just have the computer name, um, but again, we can say like, hey, you know, Bob doesn't normally work from this computer. I see someone locked out Bob's account from a computer in a business unit that Bob doesn't even have access to, right? You can use context of your operation to really make this um, useful for you. Um, and caller computer is not in your domain again, right? So if you know the name of all computers on your network and you're just getting junk computer names here, probably should look into that. Um, you can also monitor for spikes in the group enumeration, right? So if someone runs something like Bloodhound, if they run other enumeration tools, you could very well see a spike as they're enumerating every user in there. So last one we're going to look at today, 4738. So generated unsuccessful user account change. So within, your, within Active Directory, every user has that metadata associated with them, right? What's their home path? What's their login script? What's the... Um, password or uh, what's the um, you know how often do they have to change passwords things like that there's a lot of others the smart card settings things like uh, can is delegation possible with this account um, what this what 4738 tracks is changes to any setting within that user account and so when you look at these events and I should mention this is successful changes so you know the changes made when you look at these events, what you're going to see is the fields that were changed, um, or um, they're actually going to have the new values in them. If the field wasn't changed, it's just going to be a dash. But what this can help you is this can help you again, you'll see the account name, domain, login ID, security ID, and the changed field. This can help you look again for attackers maybe subtly manipulating um, accounts on your network. Um, Again, you need some context on this one to understand what's normal and not. But what you can look for here is high risk fields changing in critical accounts, right? You can again, look for the primary group not being local or domain users. You can also look for user account control flags um, changing in there, right? So look for certain security fields that you expect to be enforced for those being changed. Again, this is super useful as you get really granular and as you really understand either your network or the network that you're threat hunting or trying to protect on, this can give you a really, really deep view um, into some very low level operations of uh, what an attacker might be doing. Thanks for tuning in today. Again, this was a quick overview of some of the ways you can audit user accounts um, using the advanced audit logs in Windows. We hope this helped you out. Um, let us know if it did, and we hope to see you back next week. Thanks a lot.